Hey guys, uh, this is take two of a video that I had recorded and apparently recorded without sound. So, fantastic times. Right, let's take a look. So, uh, we're looking at wave effects here. And the first thing we're looking at is uh, reflection. I'm not going to read these definitions here because you guys can read. But uh, I do want to point out... A very key point, and this is true for reflection, refraction, you name it. Uh, we always measure our angles of incidence and reflection and refraction against what is called the normal line. What is the normal line? It's just a line that is drawn perpendicular to the surface that you are uh, either bouncing light off of, in the case of reflection, or um, the surface between two mediums in the case of refraction, and we'll see that a little bit later. But this is really, really important. Okay, so knowledge of your normal line is key. So next, um, a student has studied reflection by following instructions below. Uh, you are asked to analyze the image um, of his work. Okay, so we have an instant ray. And I've drawn a little arrow here to show the direction of the ray, which is always a good idea. And I have not measured this with a protractor, but I kind of eyeballed it and it looks perpendicular to me, which means that my angle of instance and my angle of reflection are both going to be 45 degrees. So conclusion, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. And this is uh, generally true. And by generally, I mean always true. Okay, next page. So here we look at refraction and you are asked to do a little bit of investigation. So refraction is simply when uh, the speed of light changes as it transitions from one medium to another. And a lot of students ask, uh, why does it do this? And it's kind of a complicated question, but um, my best, I guess, answer to that question is simply that the particles of a medium, the atoms, are composed of uh, subatomic particles which have their own electric fields, electromagnetic fields. And those electromagnetic fields interfere with the propagation of a wave, the light wave, okay? So light itself is an electromagnetic wave, and so it's slowed down by the electromagnetic fields of matter, okay? So here you can see an example of some refraction going on. We have not only the refraction of water, uh, so the refraction between air and uh, glass, and the refraction between the glass and the water. All three substances are going to have different indexes or indices of refraction. And we'll see why that's important very shortly. Okay, uh, you are asked to open up this applet uh, from the very, very useful FET uh, website, University of Colorado, good stuff. Okay. Uh, you were then asked to label this diagram, and I still need to do that. Okay, so here we have our refracted ray right here. And now I have labeled it. Uh, the angle of reflection, angle of refraction is again measured off the normal, as is the angle of instance. Note that there's also an angle of reflection here. Uh, we have a reflected ray coming off of the, sh the shiny uh, surface of our medium, which is in this case water. Okay. Um, this is a very subtle reflection, and a lot of students don't notice it when we do this experiment live uh, in class with ray boxes, which we will do next year. 
Okay, uh, so you are asked to move the laser pointer and observe how the angle of refraction changes with the angle of incidence. And I have summarized the changes here. As the angle of incidence decreases, the angle of incidence also decreases. Uh, okay, so this should be angle of refraction in both cases. Just having a really good time getting this one out. Okay, uh, so as the angle of incidence decreases, the angle of uh, refraction also decreases, and as the angle of incidence increases, the angle of refraction also increases. We should note here, though, that these angles, uh, the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction, are not proportionate, okay? Uh, we will get into the math of that in grade 12, uh, sorry, grade 11, when you take IB physics. So don't worry about it for right now. But right now, all you need to know is that these angles are not proportionate, okay? So when a wave passes from a fast medium to a slow medium, medium the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. So that means that when crossing the medium boundary, the rays bend toward the normal, okay? And so you can see that here on the diagram. So the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. Okay, so we then change the slow medium from water to glass by moving the slider. And the speed of light in glass is slower than that in water. So what do we see here? The angle of refraction gets smaller, okay? So measured against the normal, our angle gets even smaller. So what that means is we have more refraction. So our conclusion then is that a higher index of refraction means a greater refraction will occur. Okay, so here we change our incident ray so that we have uh, a more dense medium, water, with a higher index of refraction going into a less dense medium with a smaller index of refraction. And in this case, what happens is our angle of incidence is going to be less than our angle of refraction. Our angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. And this is the opposite of what we saw um, in the previous example, okay? So when our index of refraction for our incident medium is greater than the index of refraction for our refracting medium, this angle will be greater, the angle of refraction will be greater than the angle of incidence. So it's really important that you guys know this and are comfortable with it. Okay, uh, next. When we have our slow medium uh, as the incident medium and the fast medium as our refraction medium, there is an interesting phenomenon that can occur, okay? And that phenomenon is called total internal reflection. So basically what happens here is when our angle becomes large enough, our angle of incidence becomes large enough, we no longer have refraction, okay? And the angle at which this total internal reflection occurs is called our critical angle. Um, and in this, in this particular example, the critical angle is 50 degrees for a ray leaving water and entering air. But for different substances, uh, the critical angle will be different. And again, in order for total internal reflection to occur, your incident medium needs to be uh, needs to have a higher index of refraction than your refracting medium. Okay. Okay. So here we have water waves in what is called a ripple tank. So this is just a a tank with a wave generator. 
and uh, we are asked to draw a dashed line to represent the normal at the medium boundary. So I've done that. And remember the dashed line is just going to be a line perpendicular to um, the boundary between the mediums. Okay, so that's all that is. Once I have that dashed line, I can measure my angle of incidence and uh, I can measure my angle of refraction. Note here that our rays are perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. Okay, so they're just showing us the direction that our waves are moving in. So perpendicular rays, there we go. So is deep water faster or slower and how, how could you tell? So the deep water is faster, and we can tell because the angle of instance is larger than the angle of refraction. The wavelength uh, then is going to be larger in deeper water. And since velocity is equal to wavelength times frequency, then velocity is going to be proportionate to wavelength. So where you see a larger wavelength, you would expect a larger velocity. And that's what we see here. Where you have a smaller wavelength, you would expect a smaller velocity, and we have that. Okay, so basic proportionality here. Okay, so um, this does explain why pencils look broken or bent in water. And it also explains why spear fishermen are wizards um, because they're really good at predicting where the fish actually is as opposed to the ghost fish that they see due to refraction. Okay, next we're going to quickly chat about diffraction. And I have shown the areas of diffraction here with some scribbling, which is, of course, the best way to communicate. Okay, so uh, we have diffraction around an obstacle and diffraction through a gap. Through a gap. Uh, your book does a good job of explaining how wave fronts are responsible for this phenomenon. So let's maybe just take a quick look at that. Here we go. Uh, so when you look at a wave front, so this would just be... Um, I don't know, the easiest way to think of it is usually uh, as the crest of a wave. So it doesn't really matter which part of the wave we consider, but um, typically we would think of a wavefront as occurring at the crest of the wave. Okay, so what's happening here is that uh, each point on our crest behaves like a point source for a wave. And you can think of a point source uh, you can actually create your own point source. All you have to do is get a bowl of water and start dipping your finger in the water. Your finger then is going to generate these circular, circular waves and your finger then will be the point source of the wave. So a wave is made up of a whole bunch of these point sources. Um, and if you block off part of the wave, then the remaining parts will still behave as point sources. Okay, so you can see that in the case of our diffraction. Here we have the original bit of the wave front that is still going through our obstacle. But then you have this, you have this curvature, and that's because the edges of the front are still behaving like a point source. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Uh oh, where is it? Where are you? There we go. Okay, so that that's why this phenomenon occurs, and it, it explains a lot about diffraction. Okay, so here are just some examples. We have a small opening, and over here we have a larger opening, 
And again, you can kind of see uh, that rounding off of the edges is we have our point source behavior. So in both cases, you can see we have our wave rounding after it passes through an obstacle, and that's because our wave begins uh, behaving like a point source through the obstacle. Okay, note that the wavelength does not change. So our wavelength from here to here, still the same as the wavelength from here to here. And that's as we would expect. Okay, uh, here are some other examples. Um, just make a note. Note that we get clear diffraction. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, we get more obstruction with a smaller wavelength. So small wavelengths do not produce as much diffraction as large wavelengths. And this is why light doesn't bend around corners, uh, at least not in a way that we can easily detect, but sound does. Okay, light does diffract though, and this explains why you can see through very small cracks. So if you hold your hand up to your eyeball right now, you will see kind of a blurry, uh, you'll see a blurry image through your fingers, e even if the crack is very, very small. And that is due to diffraction. Okay, uh, finally, our last bit here, you were asked to sketch refracted ray and wave fronts. And here I've done that. So in the first one, we go from a slow medium to a fast medium. And remember that our angle of refraction must be greater than our angle of incidence in this case. Okay, so I've drawn my rays here, my refracted ray, and my incident ray was already on here. And again, note that my ray direction is perpendicular to the direction of the waves. Okay, it's just showing the direction of energy transfer. Also note that my wavelength has gotten larger in my fast medium. And again, that is due to the proportionality of velocity to wavelength. Okay, we then look at uh, fast versus slow. And here, my angle of incidence is greater than my angle of refraction. And my wavelength in the slow medium is smaller because my velocity has decreased. Okay, and here are some other example sketches. I don't think I need to get into the details too much. Um, note that the smaller the gap, uh, the more point-like behavior your waves are going to have, okay? In other words, we'll have very round waves if we have a smaller gap. Whereas if we have a larger gap, then some of the original wave front uh, is still going to exist, okay? So you can still see the original wave front as we pass the through the slit. Okay, so that does it for this video, second time recording, good and fun times. Okay, have a great day, guys. I will talk to you later.